Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Kenmore dishwasher sump gasket. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new sump gasket. The sump gasket seals the sump to the tub body. The manager should be changing it out, so if it's damaged, you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to get to the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged, and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected and are at the sink, we're going to open up the dishwasher door. Once you have the door open, we're going to take the lower rack out. All you have to do is pull it out, lift it off, and set it aside. Now we can take off the upper rack. First, we have to take off the end caps from the rails. So we're just going to grab the rails and pull them out about halfway. Then we can take them off the rails. On this end cap, there's a set of lines on this side that we have to press. So it releases the locking tab on the other side. So we're just going to press on that and then pull the end cap towards the center of the dishwasher. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. This one comes off the same way. Now we can pull the upper rack out. All you have to do is grab it and pull it off the rails. Once you have it out, you can push the rails back in. And then we can set the dish rack aside. Now that we have the racks out of the way, we can take off the lower spray arm. We just have to unscrew this stud right here. Sometimes it's on there pretty tight, so we're going to use a pliers to turn it. It's a reverse thread, so you want to go clockwise to loosen it up. Once you have it unscrewed, you can lift the lower spray arm out and set it aside. Now we're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that hold the water supply tube to the tub. You want to be careful when you're taking these out that you don't drop them. There's a bunch of open holes in the sump, and if you drop one down to the sump, you're going to have to take the cover off to get them out. Now that we have the screws out, we have to turn the water supply tube over into the right corner so we can release the base from the sump. But first we're going to reach up and pull it down a little bit and move it to the right a little bit so it comes off the mounting studs. Once you have it moved over to the side on the top, then we can turn the bottom where it's locked into the base. Once you have it turned over, then we can lift it off the sump. Once you have it off the base, you can pull the water supply tube out of the dishwasher. Now we can reach in and pull out the lower wash arm support. Make sure you don't lose this washer. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. Now we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and use it to carefully pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets. Once you have it out, you can grab it by the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Once you have it all the way out, you can close the dishwasher door so we can lay it on its back. Before we put the dishwasher on its back, we're going to lay a towel down to protect the floor and catch any water that may come out. Once you have the towel down, we can lay the dishwasher on its back. 
All you have to do is carefully lower it down. Now that we have the dishwasher on its back, we have access to the sump assembly. We have to take off a bunch of stuff so we can push the sump assembly back up into the dishwasher. Before we take anything off, we're going to put an extra towel down to catch any water that may come out. Once you have the towel down, we're going to take the drain hose off. We're going to use a pliers to compress the clamp. And you can pull the hose off and take the clamp at the same time and just leave it on the hose so it's there when we put it back on later. Set that out of the way. Now that we have the drain hose off, we're going to take this fitting off. We're going to use a Torque 15 driver to remove the screw that holds it on. Once you have the screw off, you can lift the fitting off and get it out of the way. There's an O-ring and this plastic piece right here that has to come off also. Once you have the fitting off, we can just lift the shield out, set it aside. Now we can take the wires off the drain pump. There's two wires on the back of the pump, a gray one on the bottom and a blue one on the top. All you have to do is unplug it and get the wires out of the way. And then we can take the drain pump off the sump. To release the drain pump, there's a little locking tab right here that we have to press down on. Once you have it pressed, you can turn the pump to release it from the sump. Once you have it off, you can pull it off and set it aside. And then this little heat shield is going to come off also. So just lift that out, set it aside. Now that we have the drain pump out of the way, we can take the wires off the temperature sensor. There's a white one on top and a yellow one on the bottom. All you have to do is pull them off and get the wires out of the way. Next, we can take off the wiring harness from the motor. There's a locking tab on each side. All you have to do is press on each side, and pull the harness off. Now that we have everything off the sump, we can take out the three locking tabs that hold the sump to the body. All you have to do is pull these out, set them aside. Once you have the locking tabs out, we're just going to press on the sump and try to break it free from the tub. You don't have to push it all the way up into the dishwasher. We're just going to make sure it's broken free. To put the dishwasher up on its feet, we're just going to carefully lift it up. And then we're going to push it back so the tail end goes underneath the countertop so the dishwasher doesn't tip over when we open up the door. Now the way the door open, you can reach in and pull the sump assembly out of the bottom of the dishwasher. We're just going to lift up on the front first and then pull the back out. Once you have it free, you can pull it out of the dishwasher. Now that we have the sump out, we put a towel down to protect the countertops so we can pull the sump gasket off. It's just pushed on to the lip, so all you have to do is pull it off all the way around. Once you have it free, you can pull it off the sump assembly. Here's the old sump gasket next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new sump gasket on, we're just going to get the lip underneath the sump and stretch it around. Once you have it in place, we can put the sump assembly back into the dishwasher. Before we put the sump back in the dishwasher, you want to make sure you clean this area up. So when you push it down in there, you get a good seal. Once you have the lip of the tub cleaned up, you want to leave that wet and also get the new sump gasket wet. That'll make it easier to slide the sump assembly down into the bottom of the tub. Once you're ready, you can grab the sump and we're going to put the motor back in first. Once you have it in place, you can drop the front down and you want to make sure that this tab right here goes into the notch 
and then you can set it down into place. And then just go around and push it in all the way around the tub. You want to make sure you get it seated all the way into the tub. Otherwise, when we go underneath to put the locking tabs in, they won't fit into their slots. Once you have the sump assembly pushed in, we can close the dishwasher door. We're going to pull the dishwasher out far enough so we can lay it on its back. But first, we're going to go around back and put one of the retaining clips in. Now that we're on back, we're going to put the rear retaining clip in. Just slide right into the sump. Once you have it locked in place, we can put the dishwasher on its back. Now that we have it on its back, we can put the other two retaining clips in. All you have to do is press them into the sump. Now that we have the retaining clips in, we can reattach the wiring harness to the motor. All you have to do is line it up and snap it on. Once you have it on, we can attach the wires to the temperature sensor. All you have to do is plug the wires back onto the sensor. Remember the yellow one was on the bottom and the white one was on the top. Before we put the drain pump on, we have to put the shield on. You want to make sure that the hole on the shield goes right on the pin here on the side of the sump. All you have to do is get the shield behind the wires and hold it in place. And we can grab the drain pump and push it into the sump. Swing it over so it locks in place. Once you have the drain pump locked into place, we can reconnect the wires. We're just going to grab the wires and plug them in. Remember the blue wire was on top, the gray wire was on the bottom. To put the fitting on, we're just going to lower it onto the sump. Once you have it in place, we can put the O-ring on. Once you have the O-ring on, we can put the shield on. All you have to do is set it into place and then we can grab the top half of the fitting and push it down onto it. To make it easier to get this on, you can get the O-ring wet and inside the housing wet. So it'll make it easier to slide down. Once you have it on, we can use the Torque 15 driver to put the screw in. Now we can grab the drain hose and put it onto the fitting. Once you have it started, we can use the pliers to compress the clamp and press the hose all the way down on the fitting. Then move the clamp all the way down so we get a good seal. Once you have it in place, we can put the dishwasher back up on its feet. Once you have the dishwasher back on its feet, we can pull the towel out. Now we have to reach underneath and put the lines through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16th inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected, we can open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws in, we can put everything back inside the dishwasher. First we're going to put in the wash arm support. Make sure you still have the washer on it. All you have to do is set it down into place. To put the water supply tube back in, we're just going to line it up in the right corner like we did when we took it off. Once you have it in place, we're going to line it up on the sump filter and set it down in place. 
you have it in place, we're gonna carefully turn it over so it drops down and locks into place. Once you have it locked in, you wanna move the water supply tube around so the screw mounting studs line up and we can put the screws in. We can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Remember, just like when we took them out, you wanna be careful that you don't drop them and they go down inside the sump. Now we can put the top screw in. Now we can put the lower spray arm in. We're just gonna set it onto the stud. And remember, it's reverse thread, so we're gonna go counterclockwise to tighten it down. And we're gonna use the pliers to lift up on the stud and make it easier to turn and get the threads to engage. Once you have it tight, the spray arm should still spin freely. And then we can put the racks back in. To put the upper rack on, we're gonna pull the rails out. Once you have them out, we can line up the wheels and push the rack on. Once you have the wheels in there, we're gonna push the rack all the way in. Then we're gonna pull the rails back out so we can put the end caps on. To put them back on, we're just gonna line them up on the rails so they go into the little notches here. And then once you get them this far, we're gonna have to press on the release side again so that the locking side goes on. Once you have this one on, we can do the one on the other side. Now that we have them both on, we can push the upper rack back in. Now we can put the lower rack back in. All I have to do is set it onto the door and push it back into place. Once you have it in, you can close the dishwasher door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.